Hi everyone. So we are almost at the last chapter of class 11 and it's called the sorting technique. Now what do you mean by the term sorting? Sorting means arranging data either in ascending order or descending order. And there are various sorting techniques which was you know planned or developed by many different individuals. Okay, in this chapter, we're going to be talking about two sorting techniques. It's called the bubble sort and the insertion sort. Okay, so uh, now you might think that uh, in list, we already have a sort um, function. Okay, so uh, why are we learning this? We're just learning the techniques that was developed to sort. Now your sort function, be it in Python or be it in any programming languages, definitely uses one of the sorting methods. And we are learning only two, but there are a couple of sorting methods or sorting techniques. Is that clear? Okay, so let's start with bubble sort. Now let's assume these are the five elements that you have in a list. And you plan to sort this list. Now what does the bubble sort do or how does it function? it compares the adjacent elements. That means it compares the element at index location 0 with index location 1 and whichever is lesser, it swaps place. Then it compares the element at index location 1 with index location 2 and the lesser one comes ahead. And this goes on till the end. When we finish this process, once the biggest element already reaches the last location. Now that doesn't mean your list is sorted. You need to be doing the same process over and over again n minus 1 times. That is the number of passes required for a particular element to be sorted. Now sometimes your uh, elements could be sorted even before n minus 1 times. Okay, but you're not sure because the elements could be anything. Suppose your elements were in complete descending order, then to convert it to complete ascending order, you would definitely have to do it n minus 1 times. So we are not sure about the elements present in the list. So we have to be doing the, the process of, you know, comparisons and uh, swapping n minus 1 times. Okay, so let's just look at this example here. Let me assume the value of n. Okay, just give me a minute. Let me take a pen there. Okay, let me assume the value of n in this scenario is 5, correct? 5 elements. So how many times would I have to do the passes or the loops? I said 5 times. What is done? 6 is compared with 4. Okay, isn't 4 lesser? Yes, so 4 is brought here and 6 is taken there. Then 6 is compared with 5. So 5 is brought here and 6 is taken there. Then 6 is compared with 2 and 2 is brought here and 6 is brought here. Then 6 is compared with 1 and 1 is brought here and 6 is brought here. This is what I call as the result of pass 1. And by the result or by the end of pass 1 or loop 1, the biggest element has already reached the last location. That doesn't mean your list is sorted. You need to continue the same process again from the first element onwards n minus 1 times. So next time the comparison is between 4 and 5, there is no comparison because already 4 is smaller. Then the comparison is between 5 and 2. So 2 is brought here and 5 is taken there. Then the comparison between 5 and 1, so 1 is brought here and 5 is taken there. Now 5 is not going to be compared to the last element because we already know the last element is the biggest element. So every time I move through the loop or move through the passes, I will not be going to the last element. I will just keep shifting one element to the left, okay? And that's the result of your pass 2. Then again we compare 4 with 2. So 2 is brought here and 4 is brought here. Then 4 with 1, yes. 1 is brought here and 4 is brought here. And we will not be comparing with the last two elements because the last two elements are already the biggest elements. So the result of this loop is this. Then you compare 2 with 1. 1 is brought here. 2 is brought here and no more comparisons are done because the last three elements are already sorted. And finally, what's the result of your 
fourth pass is one two four five six which is nothing but the sorted list so did you understand how many times did we repeat this entire loop how many times are we doing this loop i am doing this loop n minus 1 times and n minus 1 times what are you doing you are swapping consecutive elements okay so let me just take you to the next screen to explain finally we have tried the program right so to explain the lines that i have written in the program okay now in bubble sort method i'm going to be making use of a variable called i and the responsibility of the i is to keep track of the number of passes required okay I'm going to be keeping track of a variable called j and the responsibility of the j is to do, do comparison between adjacent elements. When you say adjacent elements, you mean j and j plus 1 element. And finally, you keep remembering that every time when you're doing adjacent elements, do you go till the end? No. The first time I go till the end, the second time I go one less than the end, the third time I go two less than the end and how do I come to that formula is nothing but n minus 1 minus i. Because initially i is 0, so you will go up to n minus 1. Then when i becomes 1, n minus 2, then n minus 3. So you are reducing the comparisons because we know towards the end of the list, the elements are already sorted. Okay. So now let's look at the program. Let's assume this is your list with some elements there. I've taken the same number of elements. I do need to know the number of elements in the list because that many passes I have to do the i loop, correct? So I take the number of elements. Len is a function that gives you number of elements and I take it into a variable called n. Fine. Now I write my i loop. i loop is saying 0 to n minus 1. So I need to do it n minus 1 times. So if I had written 1 to n minus 1, 1 to n, it would do n minus 1 times. Because I'm starting from 0, I wrote 0 to n minus 1. So it will start at 0 and go up to n minus 2, which is actually meaning because you're starting from 0, the loop is going to be executed n minus 1 times. Okay. Then you have the j loop. j loop always starts the comparison from where? From 0. But does it always end at n minus 1? No. It keeps, you know, first time it ends at n minus 1, next time at n minus 2, next time at n minus 3. And that is what my loop is doing. It says go up till n minus 1 minus i. So as you loop, as the i increases, you keep decrementing the comparisons also. And what are you doing? You're comparing the jth element with the j plus 1 element, right? That's the adjacent elements. And if the jth element was greater than the j plus 1 element, what were you doing? Swapping. Okay, Python has very easy method of swapping. You write a comma b is equal to b comma a means your swap is done. Unlike the, you know, other programming languages where you would have to take some temporary variable. And my sorting is done clear so i hope bubble sort is clear let's go to another sorting technique it's called the insertion sort now how does the insertion sort works it takes each element okay and finds that elements appropriate position with respect to all the elements before it in the list i repeat it takes each element and finds the appropriate position for that element with respect to all the elements before it. And that is the reason. Now, if you look here, I have done some in, um, you know, red and some in green. The green represents each element that I'm considering currently. Okay. And why did the green not begin from the first element? Because I said you're comparing this element to all its previous elements. If you were taking the first element, is there any comparison with the previous elements? Does previous exist in this case? No. Okay, so what do I do here? I take element 4. Okay, I can't figure out. Okay, I take element 4 and I compare it with 6. So now what am I going to do is I'm going to be starting my I loop here. Okay, because I don't want to compare 6 with anything else because there are no elements before 6. So this is where my I loop starts and this is where my J loop will start. So J is going to be nothing but starting at I minus 1, 1 before where your I is. Okay, now what will I do? I will compare the Jth element with this green, the green portion. Is 6 greater than 4? Yes. So that means what? 6 should shift so that it makes place for 4. So 6 shifts here. Shifts here means what? It overrides 4 with 6. But now, if I overwrite 4 with 6, won't I lose the value 4? Yes. So what am I going to be doing in my program is as follows. I will take a variable called value or any temporary variable 
and you store the ith element there so what's the ith element currently 4 okay so that you don't lose out on 4 then you start your j loop just before i check if the jth element happens to be greater than the value element if it is shift it to its right shifting to the right means what whatever is at the zeroth location should be shifted to location 1 so technically can i say whatever is at the jth location you are shifting to j plus 1 correct okay then then you decrement j now when you decrement j now j here actually is going to be minus 1 why because if you remember this is index number 0 this is index number 1 this is index number 2 3 and 4 okay so j has become minus 1 but when j becomes minus 1 doesn't it say that you have gone beyond the what do you say beyond the list yes so where should i what should i do at j plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 is what 0 at j plus 1 you insert the value 4 so you and 4 is stored in a variable called value so this becomes 4 so didn't you compare the first element or the second element in this scenario with its previous elements and find its appropriate position so all the elements that are going to be greater than 4 will keep shifting 1 to its right and make place for 4 so that's the result of pass 1 or loop 1 next I'm going to be comparing 5 so my i has reached here obviously if i is here j is here correct currently okay and value variable i'm just calling it v in this scenario is now going to be 5 what am i doing checking if 6 is greater than value it is so shift it one to its right so this gets this becomes 6 then i decrement j okay is 4 okay this is my next j is 4 greater than 5 no which means what 4 is not going to shift right so where should 5 come at j plus 1 location this is j plus 1 location at that location you put the value of v or value itself so this becomes 5 okay didn't 5 get inserted at the correct location yes so that's the result of pass 2 okay then this becomes i so can you see i initially it was at index location 1 then it came to index location 2 then it came to index location 3 so i is going on increasing and j always starts at 1 less than i so this is j okay what should i do before i shift i should take this into a temporary uh, variable so i just say value is equal to excuse that other part value is equal to 2 correct now compare jth element that is 6 with value is it greater yes shift it to its right so this becomes 6 decrement j compare this is j again okay compare the jth element with value is it greater yes shift to its right so 5 reaches here decrement j compare jth element with value is it greater yes shift it here so this becomes 4 decrement j now when you decrement j it has reached minus 1 location I mean from 0 to minus 1 I'm not talking about your backward indexing or anything okay j is 0 when you subtract 1 it becomes minus 1 now when it becomes minus 1 what does it mean that that element that you were comparing has to be at minus 1 plus 1 the next location so the next location is this so this becomes 2 and that's the result of your loop 3 okay now the comparison so now i has reached here so remember the i loop is going to be very easy I started at 1 and I'm, go I'm going up to n minus 1 correct so then you start your j loop here this is your j is the jth and remember to take this into a temporary variable otherwise you're going to lose the data of the minute you shift is 6 greater than 3 yes so shift 6 here so this becomes 6 then you decrement j so this is your j correct is 5 greater than 3 yes so shift it here so this becomes 5 now then you decrement j again is 4 greater than 3 yes so shift 4 here so this becomes 4 decrement j now an interesting thing is 2 greater than 3 no so what are you going to do at j plus 1 location you insert the value of 3 or the value stored in variable v that is 3 and that's the result of your fourth pass and can you see the array i mean the list is already sorted 
okay so now let's see how did we write the i loop i started at 1 and i went up till can you see the green thing going up to the last location so i went up till n minus 1 where did you start j j was always one behind i so j is starting at i minus 1 till where can j maximum go as long as it's greater than or equal to 0 you can't go beyond that right but what were we doing whenever the jth element was greater than the value element you were shifting one to its right shifting one to its right means what whatever is at j is going to be brought to j plus 1 and the shifting happened in the loop once you come across the jth location where no more shifting takes place then what does it mean the value element is sh was shifted at the j plus because this element is not shifted so that where is the blank space at the next location so at j plus one you insert the value clear so i'm going to be making use of the i loop which is going to be talking about my green element there i'm going to be uh, using the variable j which was all my pink or red elements there for comparison okay so let's assume this is your list and you've got the number of elements now i was starting at one remember and it was going to the last element so if you write n it'll go to n minus one and what did i do to all those green elements you remember i stored it into a temporary variable that is what i mean by value is equal to uh, l of i then where did i start my j loop one before i so j starts at i minus one what's the condition for j that it can maximum go up till elements greater than or equal to zero but when are you doing the shifting? I have written one more condition because we are, this loop is for the shifting loop, shifting to its right. When are we doing the shifting? As long as the jth element is greater than the, the temporary element which is in um, value. And I am doing the shifting. What do you mean by shifting? I said whatever is at j, you are transferring at j plus 1. Remember to read it from the right side, okay, assignment operator. So whatever is at L of j is going to be transferred as uh, transferred to l of j plus 1 and do you remember decrementing j so that we can keep doing the transferring now when will this while loop end when we come across an element that should not be shifted then in that scenario did we put the element at the jth location no at the next location next location means what j plus 1 so then finally after you finish the shifting at j plus 1 you insert the value is that clear so i hope bubble sort and insertion sort is clear because these are the two sorts that you need from the exam point of view okay now the number of passes in both of them were n minus 1 correct and the number of comparisons in both of them is n into n minus 1 divided by 2 you could work out and see but in insertion sort it is not always going to be n into n minus 1 divided by 2 that's maximum because what you saw we are not comparing the green block with all the blocks before it only till the blocks could be shifted right so it's not necessary that you will have n into n minus 1 divided by 2 comparisons it is the maximum n into n minus 1 divided by 2 comparisons is that clear so i hope sorting is clear and the program that we have also written is clear to you okay thank you